What is your most disturbing, scary, or creepy real story? Serious Part 2. For more such content, please like and subscribe our channel thread tonic. Count 1. So I was sleeping, and in the middle of the dream, a character of my dream who was doing something turned her head, looked at me very seriously, and said, There's someone in your apartment, wake up. I nearly had a goddamn heart attack, and my apartment was empty. Account 2. When I was taking a three-hour trip with my ex to her hometown, it was about 1 a.m., and I started to get very drowsy. The ex had fallen asleep beside me, and I started to drift off. Next things I remember is a hand gripping my head and forcing it towards my ex. And she was looking at me dead serious, saying, Wake up. I woke up with a start, only to realize I had drifted into the oncoming lane towards the shoulder and was going roughly 160 kilometer to her poach. I swerved back into my lane and instinctively hit the brakes to slow down. This woke up my ex, who asked what happened. I claimed a deer had ran in front of the car. I never told her or anyone that I almost killed the both of us out of stupidity. Account 3. I had awesome parents who let me sleep in the living room on weekend nights when I was very young because my sister was a light sleeper and I could stay up until dawn. But of course I always end up sleeping on the couch because Nick at Nighter made me tried. So, one night I wake up to the prickly feeling like an instinct just bolted into a sitting position and stared out the front window. We lived in rural Georgia, so you can imagine the magnitude of trees. In perfect light cast from the moon, I see a silhouette of someone in this fucking tree. The family dog dashes to the window and is snarling into the glass. Terrified, I run into my parents' room and try to explain to my parents that there is a strange person outside. Dad grabs something defensive and darts outside with the dogs to beat the wax off the hothead. I tremble in Mama's arms until Dad comes home and says he saw no one, and to go to bed, I decide to sleep in my regular bedroom. I fill in my sister in as to what happened. Dad is making regular rounds in the house with a cup of coffee. We're all still, and I finally think, I can sleep, nope. I notice the man outside my window. From what I can see in the moonlight, he gives me a shush signal and runs away. Just turns around to run a straight line away. I swear I couldn't stop crying for what felt like hours. Account 4. A week after gaining my CPR certification, I had to try and perform CPR on a woman dying of a heroin. Probably other drugs too. Overdose. I was at a thrift store with some friends looking for Halloween costumes and someone came in saying that someone was passed out in the parking lot. I was in the dressing room, and it just got super quiet. So I came out and told them I was certified, and I'd go take a look, and that they needed to call 911. I go outside and don't see anyone on the ground. Someone comes out and shouts that the person is in the car that's parked far out by itself. I ran over and honestly freaked the fuck out. She was pretty much already dead, completely blue in the face slumped against her car window. She had the red druggy rings around her eyes, but those were blue too because she was so oxygen deprived. We opened the door, and I'll never forget that. When we turned her head to see if she still had a pulse, she had tears running down her face. We pulled her out of the car, put her on the ground, and took her pulse again because the first person to do it wasn't sure. We started CPR, and the ambulance arrived about a minute after. They got her strapped up and in and continued CPR. They had another ambulance come and those EMTs got out and there was literally like six of them surrounding her. The cop told us they had administered some type of drug that can apparently reverse heroin overdoses if given in time. But she was pretty much dead already. They would do the necessary stuff until they could get to the hospital and call it, according to him. I also remember when we opened the door... There was heroin needles and empty pill bottles all over the floor. She wasn't very old. We also think she had kids. She had some toys and a car seat, plus two names tattooed on her. Edit. Wow. Thank you guys so much for the responses and the gold. It was definitely a rough situation. But for being 19 at the time, I think I handled it well. Account 5. In 2004, I was a young, dumb, 17-year-old country girl in the city. For the first time for college, 
One night, I decided I could totally safely walk back to my dorm at around 1.30 in the morning, despite not really knowing where I was. Of course, I instantly end up wandering around a terrible part of the city. Most of the streetlights are busted out. Trash everywhere. Loud arguments from inside the dilapidated-as-fuck row houses. In short, I wouldn't even want to be here in the middle of the day. A car drives up behind me and slows down, so they're keeping pace with me for nearly an entire block. I look over, and there are five unsavory-looking men inside. By this point, I was approaching an intersection and they pull up, make a left, and stop in the street directly in my path. Motherfuck, completely panic at this point and just stand there, right in front of them. My mind went completely blank. I've never been that scared in my life. It didn't even make sense to try to run because they would have caught me without question. I'm not really sure how long I stood there. But suddenly the porch light in the house just past the car came on. Dude casually strolls outside carrying a bag of trash and car peels away. I completely break down crying and shaking. Dude spots me and listens to my probably incoherent story, takes me inside and gives me a soda. Then he and his roommate walk me back to my dorm. They were both lovely and invited me to check out their stand up sometime. But unfortunately, I was too young to get into a bar. I never saw them again. Don't even remember their names, but feel pretty confident that if that guy hadn't decided to take his trash out at 1 a.m. on a Saturday, my life would have taken a really shitty turn that night. Edit. I completely accept that this was totally my fault and a horribly dumb thing to do. I was extremely fortunate and am no longer that stupid. TLDR, almost abducted by five guys in a super shady part of town really late one night, saved by hero comedian. Account 6. My mother told me this not too long ago, but it happened about 10 years ago now, when my cousin was 17, 18 years old. She was in a car crash and had died a couple of weeks later in hospital. She was really close to my dad's sister, our aunt, and used to babysit her kids who were no more older than four years old all the time. Our aunt's house was under construction just before she passed away, and it continued on after she passed away. One day, my aunt got a phone call while she was at work from one of the construction workers complaining about a teenage girl who keeps showing up at the house and walking around and that she shows up a number of times during the weeks. And it has been happening for a couple of weeks. My aunt asks for a description of the girl to see if she knows her from around the neighborhood. And sure enough, the description perfectly matches my cousin who died a few weeks before. Long brown hair, red baseball cap, denim dungarees, and a white jacket. When my aunt got home, she showed them a picture of my cousin, and that all agreed that it was the girl they seen walking around the site. This story really freaked me out when I heard it, because our family was never one to believe in anything paranormal or have anything of the paranormal sort happen to them before. Account 7. When I was in high school, I had a really good friend who lived next door to a house that was always up for sale. People would move out in the middle of the night without a word, and it hadn't had the same owner for more than six months straight for a couple of years. One night we were really bored, and he suggested we go explore the house next door since it had sat empty for a while. We go around back, and there's a dog door that he can crawl through, and he unlocks the door and lets me in. The house itself is really unremarkable. It looked like it was built in maybe the 1950s and was a craftsman-style house in an older, nicer part of town. My friend's house was similarly built. The kitchen had a really nice built-in breakfast table set against a picture window. The house's electricity was off, but you could see the street light through the window. My friend and I sit down on the floor across from this table and are just hanging out, talking. Why? Who knows? All of a sudden, my friend screams, and in that instant, my vision goes black. But it wasn't that I just couldn't see. My body was engulfed in this sickly coldness from head to toe. I start screaming, and I feel my friend's hand grabbing mine and pulling me in some direction forcefully. My vision slowly comes back, and I start to warm up when I realize that we're outside under the streetlight. It was December and should have been much warmer inside of that house. Finally, I look at my friend and he looks scared. I'm really confused and kind of panicked myself and finally ask him what happened. He says that as I was talking, a black, 
thing. This figure that was all black and only had the vague shape of a girl crawled out from under the table and sat on top of me. Apparently, I started groping around with my eyes wide open like I couldn't see. And he was so freaked out, he pulled me out of the house. We're still friends and we bring it up every now and then. But the story itself never changes, and it still sends chills down my spine. To this day, I've never felt such blackness or coldness in my life. It was palpable, almost sticky. For a couple of days afterward, I couldn't shake this unsettling feeling, and I could never walk past that house again. Ugh, I'm scared to get out of bed now. Account 8. Not me, but my sister. So growing up, my sister had an imaginary friend. She said she was an older lady and she was nice, and her name was E.E. E. She talked to her and played with her all that jazz until she was probably four or so, and then it stopped. Fast forward to when my sister was about ten, my mom isn't home, she got a call to go to the nursing home for GPA, so she bolts with pops. My sister and I shared a room at the time and she was in there doing whatever, and I was on the other end of the house, all of a sudden I hear the radio in our room click on, turn all the way up, turn all the way down, and go off. This happened like three times. So I go in there to be all like WTF kid, knock it off, and she is sitting in our room, just white as a ghost. I go over to the radio to unplug it. No plug. No batteries. Only radio in the house. I look at her, and she goes, It was E.E. E. I saw her. It was E.E. E. So I call mom freaking out, and mom is so upset. Apparently, grandpa had just passed away. Okay, weird. I drop incident, whatever. A few days later at the funeral, a relative comes up to us and gives us a pic she found. My sister goes, hey, it is E.E. E. It was a pictures of my grandparents when they got married. My grandmother died before I was even thought of. When my mom was 11, we live in the home my mom grew up in. We have no pictures of her at all as my step. Grandmother got rid of them all when she moved into the house a few years after mom's mom's death. Account 9. I may have posted this before, but I don't remember. I was in high school, doing homework at the dining room table. From there, I could see the front door, our front door at the time, had a 2 x 5 ish pane of glass in it, with a lace dot curtain over it. I remember hearing a noise, like somebody was on the porch. It was probably 9 p.m. or so. It was very dark outside and the porch light wasn't on. As I'm watching the front door, I can see the screen door opening. It stands open for a minute or so, and there's nobody there. Or they were dressed all in black. I'm frozen, waiting to see what happens next. The screen door just slowly closes. If someone was there, they didn't just let it go. Someone was closing it carefully so that it wouldn't make noise. After that, I don't remember if I heard footsteps. Maybe they saw me watching them and decided to quietly get out of there. Account 10. Woke up. Clock says 3.34 a.m. I'm 17, and in my bedroom it's pitch black, but I hear some rattling downstairs. Terrified. I quietly tiptoe to my parents. Room. Weird, it's empty. Where are my parents at 3.34 a.m.? Go upstairs to my brother's room. He's usually awake all night, but while the light is on, no one is in the room. So I guess whatever those noises are downstairs, it must be them. Why are they awake? Maybe someone died. I go downstairs. In the middle of my living room is what looks like two men stealing our TV. No one else is in sight. I run upstairs as quietly as possible, shut and lock my door. Suddenly there's banging on the door. I wake up. It was a dream and the relief washes over me. I look over at the clock. Weird coincidence. It's 3.34 a.m. I'm shaking, but decide to go downstairs to prove to myself that everything's fine. I go downstairs. The two men are in my kitchen, screaming at my parents and brother. I run upstairs to my bedroom and lock the door. Ten seconds later, I hear banging. I woke up. It's 3.34 a.m. This time I had actually woken up and I don't manage to fall back asleep for about 36 hours. Edit. Lots of responses about lucid dreaming here. I spent most of my teens and early 20s as a lucid dreamer, discovering the techniques after a childhood plagued by very frightening sleep paralysis. I found a message board back in 1998 where I learned to at least have fun with it. 
The above story wasn't a sleep paralysis experience, but it was typical of the kinds of nightmares I used to have. Weirdly enough, I rarely have nested dreams anymore and haven't had a successful attempt at lucid dreaming in a few years. My guess is that it has something to do with hormones. Account 11. Wake up in the middle of the night during my university days. It's still dark and roommates are asleep. I sit down to read but then suddenly shoot up from the sofa like a rocket. Wake up again. It's a bit lighter out. Think. Wow, what a weird dream. Go outside to stretch. Then proceed to shoot up into the sky like a rocket. Wake up finally. Walk into the living room. Carpet is red, think. Wow, that's weird. Shoot up like a rocket, get stuck in roof. Wake up. It's actually morning. Go into the kitchen. And my roommate is preparing herself some breakfast. I tell her about the dreams and she laughs and says something like, Yeah, dreams are just nuts. Start to prepare my day. I have some breakfast then. Go to brush my teeth. As I am brushing my teeth, this huge fucking red demon steps into the bathroom and opens his gaping maw with rows of shark, like incisors, and screams at me. Deafening me, I fall over backwards yelling for my roommate to run or to help me or something. I notice her legs behind the monster, and she seems to be standing there yelling my name and asking, What's wrong? Oh my God, what's wrong? At this point, I was so convinced I was awake, I thought I had gone completely nuts. The alien, still screaming, reaches a massive red hand towards me. I wake up. To this day, I never know if I am truly awake. Count 12. When I was 13, my grandmother was dying of cancer. And my mother and I stayed at her house and took care of her during her last few weeks. One night at three or so in the morning, my mother ran into my room and told me that my grandmother, who was by this time completely bedridden, entered my mother's room, woke her up, and then walked out of the room. There was no creepiness at the time. Just a genuine concern for what my grandmother could possibly be doing up at 3 a.m. when she was literally days away from dying. We ran into her room, and sure enough, she had passed away. Obviously. Given the shock of my grandmother dying, my mother and I didn't sit around chatting about how weird the whole experience was. But months, or perhaps even years later, I asked her about that night, and she has no memory of telling me that my grandmother was up and walking around the house. She doesn't even remember what woke her up, or why she woke me up, gives me shivers just writing it. Account 13. When I was eight, my family moved from urban South Florida to a really small town in North Florida. It was like from a Goosebumps book. A lot of weird stuff has happened in the 15 years since we moved there, but the weirdest has got to be when my sister moved back in with my parents. My sister's husband had been shipped off to Afghanistan, so she was left alone with a newborn son. Not wanting to go through the soul-crushing loneliness of raising a newborn all alone in a trailer in the woods... She moved back into my parents' house for a while. She said it started first when the headboard of her bed would slam every now and then. Then one day she woke up because somebody was tickling her. She didn't really think about it until one night she woke my mom up by screaming, My sister is almost 30. She's not a little kid. And my mom went in and the whole fucking bed was rocking and shaking like, really violently up down to the sides, like a boat going through white water, but... My mom and sister have been through a lot of shit, so they persevered. One night, my sister was nursing her son, and something grabbed her ponytail and started yanking her head around. My mom went in the room and very sternly, like talking to a bad kid, said, I understand things are different. There's a little baby here and there never has been before. You're curious. I understand that. But you will not touch them anymore. You can look. You can stay. You were here before us, but I swear to God you are not allowed to touch them. It stopped happening. Account 14. I was walking up the hall at work, and my heel went out from under me and bent my leg wonky. I didn't even fall, but lowered myself down because my leg felt weird. The woman whose office I was walking past came out to find out what the loud, crunchy noise she heard was. The noise was my leg breaking, and she was more traumatized than I was. She had nightmares for a while and had a hard time seeing me when I returned to work. TLDR, I gave my co-worker PTSD with the sound of my fibula snapping. Account 15. My family and I were in Gettysburg, PA, when I was eight or so. 
We had just arrived that day, but my dad wanted to check out and get pictures of this memorial called the Eternal Light Peace Memorial. Before the park closed, the sun was just about to set. My mother, brother, and I all stayed in the car because we were cranky, hungry little shits. But my dad got out to look at the statue and cannons for a few minutes. All of a sudden, me and my mom saw two figures appear on the edge of the field out of the woods, opposite the side we were parked. They were all tan, I mean, head to toe. There was no other color of hair, skin, eyes at all, and one was pointing in the general direction of the memorial. They went back into the woods and then reappeared, but with another one in tow, the incident lasted about three five minutes total, and they just stood there looking. It was such an eerie feeling. To this day, my mom and I have not forgotten about it. We could see them fairly clearly because they weren't too far away. The creepiest part was that we went to a museum the next day, and they had old Confederate uniforms on display. We came to one that was labeled that it was from Tennessee. I don't remember more details, and it was the same exact color as the ones we saw. Other uniforms had slight variations, but this was dead on. My mom and I were a hundred sure of it.